Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spohr and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be creating a wedding card and matching envelope using the brand new Tied the Knot stamps and coordinating dies from the recent Simon Says Stamp Rainbows release. I have had multiple requests to use this beautiful new stamp set in a card and so I thought I would do that today. We'll be using the Simon Says Stamp A2 mask and a Fading Hearts stencil to create the background for our card. I'm going to start with a scrap of Simon Says Stamp smoke gray cardstock and we're going to trim this down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches, which is A2 size. So this is going to fit the entire front of our card base. Then we're going to take the A2 masking stencil, the largest size from this collection, and tape it to the front of our cardstock. But I'm kind of doing it backwards where I'm taping the cardstock to the back there, I guess, to hold it in place. Masking stencils are amazing because they instantly add a layer to your design without actually having to die cut or trim and mat an extra piece of paper. To give this a little bit of dimension and to give it that look of that extra layer, I'm going to gently go around the edges of the panel with Hero Arts Sea Salt Reactive Ink. I peeled the corner up there so you could kind of see how it looks because right now it doesn't really look like I'm adding anything, but I promise this white ink is going to add a really fun effect around the edges of our panel. We're not going to ink blend all the way to the center of the panel or anything like that, just around the edges. Now I'm going to leave this in place while I grab my Fading Hearts stencil. This stencil is slimline and made for using on slimline card bases, but you can also use it on any card that you want. So in this case, we're going to be inking just kind of the top portion of this stencil along the left-hand side of our panel. I didn't remove the masking stencil because that helps keep this design within this space kind of helping with that whole illusion of being a separate mat or panel on our card. Now that I have both of my stencils, I can go ahead and remove these and I'm left with this beautiful soft masked background, perfect for a wedding card. Now comes stamping and coloring in the images for our card. We're going to be using images from the brand new Tied the Knot stamps and die set. All of the images and greetings for both our card and envelope come from this set today, which is really fun. So it comes with this great card that you can, of course, adorn with all kinds of darling images. I am going to be using the congrats sentiment and to the happy couple sentiment as well as the car, a bouquet of flowers on the back of the car, a little license plate that reads, so in love, and some hearts. We're gonna start with the flowers and the car and color those in before moving on to the rest of the images. I am stamping what I want to use here on a scrap of Bristol Smooth cardstock using Lawn Fawn Jellyfish No Line Coloring Ink. Once I have my images stamped, I am going to zoom in a little bit and we will be coloring these with the Tombow dual brush pens. I love these because they are dual brush, meaning they've got the great little bullet tip here that I'm using to outline parts of the car and really get into that detail. And then I can use the brush nib to actually color in our car. I'm really tracing out the majority of the back of the car with my cool gray tin marker, and then we're gonna blend out the rest of the car with cool gray five. These are water-based markers. They will work with water if you want to. I'm actually not going to incorporate water today. Um, I didn't want to kind of have a water wet mess here, and they work great just like this. So definitely a versatile marker. I have shown them quite a bit in the last couple months or so here on my YouTube channel. They are not a new product by any means. They are just a product that 
a lot of us probably have in our craft room and just maybe haven't used in years. They're a economical type of marker to use. Um, if you don't particularly like coloring with alcohol ink markers, they are a great option there as well. So I am just kind of blending all of that out. Then we're gonna move on to like the back bumper here of the car and the tailpipe and the wheels. I guess I'll do the wheels first because I want those to be dark as well. So that's cool gray 10 and cool gray five. Then the other accents on the car are going to be colored with cool gray five, which is the lighter color here and then cool gray three. So basically just three shades of gray are gonna color in the majority of our car. And again, just kind of tracing out with the bullet tip point of my marker, doing all of my blending, kind of get all of those little bits and pieces colored in here. And it's just enough lighter that it definitely um, has enough of a difference in the vehicle. And then I do love as well the little heart there on the trunk. For the windshield of the car, we're gonna use Glacier Blue in a blender. I did a lot of Glacier Blue and then I just took a blender and kind of blended the rest of that out. And then for the seats, I kind of wanted them to look like tan leather. So we'll use light sand and sand to color those in. I did color that little heart quickly. That was blush and baby pink. The tail lights will wait for just a second. I really struggled with those and I actually ended up struggling the whole way, but I'm happy with my solution. So I will get back to that in just one moment. Let's color in the florals starting with our roses. I'm using port red, blush, and baby pink for flowers and the ribbon in this bouquet. And I like how it just, you can either do this or the more swag type of image on the back, or you can use them on their own. They're really, really pretty. The detail in these is very pretty. I love having a wedding card, engagement cards on hand. In fact, um, I've had two engagement cards to give recently, which I guess, it's that time things go in seasons. <laughs> um, so it's really nice to have some of those things on hand. And that way I don't have to make them last minute. The leaves are all gonna be colored in sea green, green and Alice blue. So kind of more of a, I call this more of the minty color family. It's not true, true mint, but I like how it's kind of bright and it provides a nice pop of color on an otherwise very neutral card. So we're definitely getting our color in the bouquet, the license plate will stamp in color here in a minute, and then the hearts will add to the card design. For the tail lights, I knew I wanted them red and I really contemplated whether going for the Carmine Red with the blender or not. I ended up doing it and I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. You know what I'm talking about? I think I should have just added a tiny bit of red and maybe blended them out with a gray to start with, but I didn't. I decided to let it sit for a minute and let it dry because I figured I'd have a lot better time trying to fix it here in a second. So we're gonna skip to our uh, die cutting and then we will work on the license plate before we fix those tail lights. And I'm just gonna run those through the die cutting machine with the coordinating dies really quick. And here is how our card is looking. So for that license plate, I'm gonna just on a scrap here of that Bristol Smooth cardstock, I am going to stamp the So In Love license plate. There are a couple other options, which I love in the stamp set. And I'm stamping it with a clear embossing ink and heat embossing with white embossing powder. I did this because I did not wanna trace over the letters with a Tombow pen. I didn't wanna stamp it in black and I wanted the letters to remain very nice and crisp and easy to read. Then we're gonna do a little 
embossed resist basically by using our blush and baby pink markers over the top. I just buffed away any ink that may be sitting on top of the embossed words and then I'll grab the coordinating die and run this through our die cutting machine to get our license plate. Now fixing our tail lights is going to look worse before it looks better. Tombos have the effect of making paper pill a little bit. So I'm using the blender to lift some of the red ink. I don't want to lift it all away, but some of it up and off of our tail lights. But you can see that the paper pilled a little bit. That's okay. We're going to kind of just persevere through that. And then we're just going to take one of our cool gray markers and gently color over the tail lights just a little bit. This is going to serve to dull that red a little bit while it still peeks out. And I actually think it works quite a bit better than just the bright red. But again, as I add that, the paper is pilling. Once this dries just a little bit, I'm gonna be able to fix this further. So I'm just not gonna mess with it. I'm not gonna to try to buff those away. And then I'm gonna take a dry paintbrush and remove those little flakes and I'm actually really happy with how this looks because I'm going to cover it with glossy accents and it's all going to be fine. Let's go ahead and assemble our car. We're going to just glue the license plate in place and then we're going to glue that bouquet right there on the back trunk. I like how there, the heart still shows that is like the key lock on the trunk as well as it hangs over the license plate just a little bit. I have backed my card with some foam adhesive, but I'm going to wait to adhere that until after I have um, gone ahead and stamped my greeting. Now, because the ink I use to stencil is a pigment-based ink, I wanted to make sure that it was dry before I do any stamping and embossing. So you can just take some embossing powder and use it directly on the cardstock, and if it sticks to anything, your background is still wet. Well, you could see all of the embossing powder just, you know, slid right off, so I'm good to go, and I can go ahead and stamp my sentiment. I'm going to stamp congrats from the Tide the Knot stamp set directly on my background. There's also a coordinating die, so if you wanted to stamp this on a separate piece of cardstock um, in another color or whatever the case may be, you could definitely do that and then die cut it and adhere it to your card. I'm instead going to stamp and emboss the smaller phrase on a separate piece of dark cardstock and layer it right underneath. So I stamped this with clear embossing ink and heat embossed with white embossing powder. We're going to take to the happy couple sentiment and stamp this on slate gray cardstock. I can go ahead and remove the backing paper from our car at this point and pop it in place because I'm not going to be stamping or embossing anything else directly on the background. My rule of thumb is generally, generally, if I can, I try to do any embossing before I add anything to my panel. Now, before I start stamping and embossing the rest of the sentiment or adding any of the rest of the embellishments for my card, I did go ahead and put glossy accents on those tail lights so that it could start drying while I'm working on other things. I wanted to give it plenty of time to start the drying process. Here is that slate gray cardstock and to the happy couple sentiment that I was talking about. And then we will simply heat emboss this and die cut it with a sentiment labels die. You guys know I'm all about those sentiment labels dies. They're one of my most often used products. I think they're just so versatile and work with so many different stamp sets. I use them all of the time. I would say I use them probably at least twice a week on cards that I create, whether they use Simon Says Stamp products or not. I am going to use a T-square ruler to help me line up my sentiment perfectly. I started to 
just go ahead and adhere it. I wasn't having a ton of luck, so the T-square ruler it is. It's gonna come to the rescue. We are going to line that up with the left side of our panel, and then I have my sentiment strip with foam adhesive on the back and some tweezers to help me line that up perfectly. I love this card. It's turning out so cute. Now that we have that, it's time to add remaining images. For this, I'm going to use the trio of hearts from the Tied the Knot stamp set. I love the hearts. I stamped them with a combination of Wild Rose and Ballet Slippers Lawn Fawn inks. I will say my one big disappointment is not the right word, but something I don't like about these hearts is that the die, die cuts them together. And you're gonna see what that looks like. It'd probably be cute on the right thing, but it does not work for this card. And I tried every which way, and ultimately I thought, you know what, this looks kind of silly. So I am going to trim them apart. I'm just going to go ahead and fussy cut around them really quick. Um, just taking your scissors and cutting around them will work great. And you'll end up with three individual hearts, which I kind of wish that the die had done in the first place because I think they're a little bit more useful that way. And I will be stamping this twice to add to my card. So I have a, um, a five hearts, I think, total when I'm all finished. And I like that little extra added bit of pink that comes up from the car into the rest of the card without overwhelming the design. So just kind of little bits of pink here and there that bring some of the heavierness, heavierness, how about heaviness, from the bottom of the card to the top of the card. Gosh, you guys, sometimes I wonder, I'm sorry. And then I'm just gonna take my embellishment wand and a little Ranger multi matte medium to adhere these to the card design. Another option would be to use some little heart accents, little heart uh, confetti pieces, or even some little die cut heart pieces if you don't wanna use these hearts and have to cut them apart. If your background's light enough, you could just stamp the hearts directly on your background and they would be super cute that way. So I'm just gonna add these remaining two really quick. And then to finish my card, I am gonna take this whole panel place it on a white top fold card base and add glossy accents to these hearts as well. So we wanna get the process of those drawing while we work on the matching envelope. And I thought having the hearts be a little raised and glossy would be really pretty here. Just kinda of add to the elegance of the design. So for our envelope, we're gonna be using the A2 V-flap envelope today. This is a die from Simon Says Stamp and it allows you to create your own custom envelope. So what is better than for an elegant, beautiful wedding card like this that has a matching envelope? I love it. So what we're gonna be doing is die cutting the components from some smoke gray cardstock. We're going to then take our middle panel while it's still flat. We haven't folded it or scored any of the scoring lines yet. And we're gonna use that same fading hearts stencil to add some detail along the left edge. So on the front of the envelope, it's going to be very subtle and clean. I know I mention this all the time in my videos when I am creating a matching envelope for a card, but my goal is to create something pretty that matches my card that doesn't take forever to create. It's just not the main focal point for me. So while that's gonna be on the front, we are going to, on that back flap, we're going to stamp, you tied the knot, and we're gonna stamp that little trio of hearts right above it. Um, we're going to stamp and emboss these with, stamp them with clear embossing ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder to match the whole design. Super simple. A little stenciling, a little stamping and embossing, done. Um, well, done stamping and stenciling. We do need to assemble the envelope, but it's super easy to do, and I will show you how to do that. 
So let's get these stamped first and embossed. So I would love to know, do you guys, have you tried making your own envelopes? I know I asked previously if any of you do and I kind of got uh, mixed results from that. Um, if you have tried, I would love to know if you have tried making your own envelopes, if you found it fun. Stenciling is definitely my number one favorite way to embellish an envelope, whether it's a pre-made one or one I've made from scratch like this one. It's just so quick and easy. I really like the envelope dies. Then there's lots of different ones. There's slimline ones, mini slimline ones, and then a uh, four bar. These are the A2. Simply because if you want your envelope to completely match, it does. I imagine this, I think it would be pretty if you hand delivered it and you use like a calligraphy alphabet stamp to customize the front of the envelope um, before you give it. I think that would be really pretty. So for the two sides of our envelope, I'm gonna take some pretty thick, like a quarter inch double-sided adhesive. I like to use a strong adhesive here and I find double-sided adhesive works really well. I'm gonna place that along the edge and then fold it on the score line and use a bone folder to make sure that it is creased really, really well. Once we have that crease, we're going to take the main panel of our envelope and we are going to score it at the top and the bottom. So the main panel is like the top and the bottom of the envelope and then these two side panels are going to be the two in the back. Um, it goes together really easy. It just, the die would have been too massively huge to try to make it all one and more than likely probably wouldn't have fit in most people's die cutting machines let alone mine. I don't know if there's any die cutting machine that would have fit in, maybe, but I don't know. Then we're going to take these panels, peel off the backing paper and adhere them along the sides on the back side of the main panel of our envelope. I like to use a Spellbinders tool in one to help me kind of lift up that paper and keep my fingers out of the adhesive. Anytime I can keep the oils from my hand out of the adhesive, it's a good thing. You definitely don't want your envelope coming apart. And then where it folds up in the back, not the, the, the flap where we stamped, but the bottom flap, on the two side flaps, we're actually going to put a little thin adhesive. So I use the thicker adhesive for the sides. Now we're gonna use the thin adhesive just along these two bottom sections. And then we're also going to put this adhesive along the two long sides on the top flap. We're not gonna be removing the backing paper from those. Those are actually gonna to serve to shut this envelope when we have written out our card and we're ready to give it. So for now, we're just gonna leave those there, but we are gonna remove these backing papers from the side flaps and fold up the bottom flap to secure our envelope. And that is going to finish this off. I always do like going over any of that, the, the uh, adhesive with my bone folder to make sure it's nice and secure. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this wedding card and envelope featuring Simon Says stamps, dies, and stencils. The supplies I use to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring Simon Says Stamp product that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new card making video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.